Good morning everyone and thank you for joining us. My name is Andrew Murray and I work for the Risk Management Implementation Unit here at ECHA. Today's webinar will explain how downstream users and sector organisations can optimise communication of safe use information in the supply chain through sector use maps. The agenda should be visible on your screens. During the webinar, you will learn about the sector use maps concept, its benefits and how to use it in practice. We will start with a presentation detailing the key principles of supply chain communication under REACH, the challenges in dealing with exposure scenarios and how sector use maps can help. After this, you will hear about the key features of sector use maps, their format, content and structure, as well as where to find them. The last presentation of the day focuses on what to do with use maps as a downstream user. Now, a few technicalities before we move on to our first presentation. We encourage you to submit your questions at any time through our question and answer panel. If you want to focus on the presentations, you can also send us questions up to 30 minutes after the last presentation. Our panellists will answer as many of them as possible directly through the Q&A panel. Please try to submit questions related to the webinar topics and do not include any confidential business information. If your question is not answered by the end of the webinar, you can send it to us using our contact form if you wish to ask something more specific or if your question contains confidential business information, you can send them also using our contact form. If you experience any difficulties with the webinar tool, you can contact our technical support team through the Q&A panel or by email. So, let's move on to our first presentation, Supply Chain Communication and How Sector Use Maps Can Help. Lauren, Please go ahead. Thanks, Andrew, and good morning, everyone, from my side. I will talk today about supply chain communication, which has introduced significant changes in the way companies need to communicate about chemicals. Communication is now required among many actors in the supply chains. Therefore, it is of particular importance to have an efficient communication mechanism in place. In my presentation, I will first provide some background information about what is meant by supply chain communication under REACH. I will then briefly summarize the main challenges expressed by different actors in the supply chain in this regard. And finally, I will introduce the use map concept. The use map concept has been developed as a response to the main challenges faced by companies. The solution is now available and needs to be implemented. But let's first set the scene. Note that, in the coming slides, the, note that the coming slides aim at illustrating the general principles of the supply chain communication under reach. Some of the requirements described are only applicable under certain conditions, which are not described here as it doesn't serve the main purpose of the presentation. So, Let's start with one question. Why is communication in the supply chain needed? Under REACH, safe use of chemicals needs to be demonstrated. The risk emanating from the uses of chemicals needs to be controlled. But what, what is needed to assess the risk? Risk results from the combination of hazard and exposure. Registrants are the ones having the best knowledge of the properties of their substances, including the hazard profile. In many cases, registrants are not using the substance themselves. The downstream users are the ones who know how the substance is used and under which conditions. For example, at which temperature the substance is used, the level of containment of the processes, the product or article types the substance ends up in. Meaningful exposure assessment can only be performed where the two types of information, hazard and uses, are combined. Therefore, communication in the supply chain is key. 
This slide aims at illustrating how reach has defined the communication mechanism in the supply chain. Reach gives a key role to registrants, here represented at the top of the picture. Registrants are required to assess the risks posed by the substance for all the uses known to them. Information on uses and conditions of use should be communicated by downstream users to the registrants. This is represented in the picture by the arrow on the left. Registrants process the information on uses received together with other data in order to confirm the conditions of safe use. Registrants have then the obligation to send information of safe use down in the supply chain, and this is represented in the picture by the arrow on the right. Ideally, the information which goes up should be the same as the one going down. This means indeed that the conditions of use described by downstream users are confirmed to be safe by registrants. Registrants are also responsible for communicating safe use information to ECA. ECA makes it further available to the general public and to other authorities. The information is used to support decision making on possible regulatory actions. As we see on this slide, REACH defines the communication flow for the information on use and conditions of use. But REACH also defines the vehicle for the communication. This vehicle is the exposure scenario. The exposure scenario is the document where the safe use conditions should be documented. Exposure scenarios are generated by registrants and communicated to authorities as part of the chemical safety report and to downstream users as an annex to the safety data sheet. In companies, the exposure scenarios received as an annex to the safety data sheet are to be checked by environmental health and safety managers or product safety managers. But what is it exactly which is communicated via the safety data sheet and its annex? The safety data sheet itself mainly reflects information of a rather general nature related to the substance's properties. Safety data sheets contains, for example, the classification of the substance, thresholds value for exposure, such as DNLs or PNX, or general advices, such as first head and firefighting measures. Exposure scenarios from the, the other sides are use-specific. In general, one exposure scenario covers one use. It describes all the tasks or processes relevant to the use, together with the operational conditions and risk management measures recommended by the registrants to ensure safe use. It should be noted that the content of the safety data sheet is prescribed in the REACH legal text, and REACH details precisely the sections of the safety data sheets and the expected content. This is not the case for the exposure scenario, for which there is no legally imposed format. Therefore, in practice, for exposure scenarios, disparity exists. What do managers on site have to do with the exposure scenario received? How relevant is it for them? Managers have to check the exposure scenario received. They have to ensure that their own uses and the use of their products are appropriately covered. First, managers need to be able to recognize these uses. And secondly, they need to compare the operational conditions and risk management measures described with their own situation. Does this match? I'm a downstream user using my product in powder form. Is it covered by the exposure scenario? I work in batch processes with a semi-closed machinery. Is it covered? Do I meet the general ventilation conditions described? These are all checks to be performed by the recipient of exposure scenarios. Where the use is not covered, further action needs to be taken. Formulators have a specificity in the sense that they have, in addition, to consider which information to communicate for the safe use of the mixture they produce. For this, they need to consolidate the information received for the individual substances entering in the mixture composition. This concludes 
my introduction on the general principle of the supply chain communication on the reach. As we have seen, there are two main directions for the information. The first direction, the information on use is going up, downstream users informing registrants. The second direction, the information on soft use coming down, registrants informing downstream users. In practice, these are in fact thousands of companies across EU who need to communicate effectively up or down. Actors involved are facing challenges of different natures. Registrants. Registrants need to generate exposure scenarios for all the uses made known to them. The experience so far shows that downstream users, companies or registrants initiate bilateral exchanges among each other, which happens to turn quickly extremely burdensome in the case of, supply of complex supply chains. The information communicated to registrants lacks structure and harmonization. As an example, the same use can be described differently by two downstream users, which complicates the task of the registrant. Can the registrant really conclude that the uses are the same? Should he decide himself to merge the uses and develop only one exposure scenario? Should he rather keep the uses separated, with the risk of increasing the number of exposure scenarios annexed to the safety data sheets? Experience shows also that the information needed by the registrants as an input to its exposure assessment is often missing. For example, the type of ventilation, the concentration range in the products, or the type of release is expected in the environment. All in all, either lots of time is spent in collecting and consolidating the information via bilateral exchanges with consumers, or registrants take unilateral decisions, for example, on the use to cover, or on the condition of use for a certain use. This may lead to unrealistic exposure scenarios, and we have to keep in mind that this is the information that downstream users and authorities get. For the downstream users, from the downstream user side, the experience shows exposure scenarios difficult to use or to process. The extended safety data sheets are often too extended. Finding the relevant information is time consuming. In addition, the format used by different suppliers often differ. Automated processing is not supported. The exposure scenarios received are often too generic or too unrealistic. Downstream users are not able to demonstrate that their use is covered and that they have the appropriate risk management measures in place. For downstream user companies, it simply means further work. Suppliers need to be contacted to ask for adaptation of the exposure scenarios. Alternatively, the companies need to ask an expert to apply scaling or carry out a downstream user chemical safety assessment. In any case, it means extra costs. The situation describes, described above has a number of business consequences. Let's just mention customer dissatisfaction, high costs, and risks associated to potential regulatory actions. But solutions exist to overcome the main challenges and business risks. Supply chain communication had been identified as one of the points for improvement in the REACH Review 2013. Key representatives of the different actors in the supply chain have worked on solutions. The CSRES roadmap has been set as a joint action between ECA and stakeholders to address the challenges highlighted before. Under the roadmap umbrella, a suite of tools has been developed for improving communication in the supply chain. The tools are now available for companies. More information can be found by clicking on the infograph. Today, I will only focus on one of these tools, the sector use maps, which you can see on the left side of the infograph. The concept was initially developed by industry in 2009 and has now been largely improved. Sector use maps are seen as the most efficient and effective option to inform the registrants about the uses of the sector in a, of substance in a sector. The Registrant Sector Association, CEFIC, 
the Dancium User Association DUC, and ECA have recent, recently signed a joint statement acknowledging the crucial role of sector use maps in achieving excellence in supply chain communication. Let me introduce you the use map concept. The use map concept is the combination of a process and a format to communicate information on uses up the supply chain. In this communication process, sector associations play a key role. In terms of format, the use maps consist of a set of templates to be used by sector association to describe the typical uses in their sector. The templates support the collection of the key information on use and condition of uses needed by the registrants to fill in the Euclid dossiers and to perform exposure assessment. The format helps in ensuring that registrants get from downstream user all the information needed. And the same set of templates is used by all to collect and communicate information. Registrants receiving information from different sectors always get it structured in the same way. In terms of process, <coughs> use maps are preferably developed by downstream user sectors associations in collaboration with their members' company. Each sector develops its own use map and agrees on a harmonized way to describe the typical uses. The sector saves its agreed use map in one central repository easily accessible to registrants. All the registrants supplying that sector access the same information from the central repository. This means that bilateral exchanges between downstream users, companies and registrants are not needed anymore. The key information is collected, streamlined and made available to registrants by sectors. Let's have a closer look at the tasks and responsibilities of the key actors in this process. First, the downstream user sectors. Sectors have to map their common uses among their membership. They have to document them using the harmonized format. Using the harmonized format, sectors have to describe the existing conditions of uses so that they can be fed into registrants exposure assessment for workers, consumers and environment. It is important that the condition described reflect the good practice in the sector. This supports a realistic exposure assessment. Sectors have to phrase the use and condition of uses in the use map in a way that downstream users can easily understand them. Indeed, the information provided in the use map will come back to downstream users via the exposure scenarios. The easiest it is for downstream users to understand the exposure scenario, the faster it is for them to process it. Finally, sectors have to make their use maps publicly available in the use map library on ECA website. This ensures visibility and easy access for all registrants. The registrants from their side have to consult the use maps library and select the use maps for the sectors they supply to. From the use map, the registrants need to select the uses that are applicable to its substance. Indeed, the sector use map contains all the typical uses of the given sector. All the uses are not relevant to all substances, and a selection needs to be done by the registrant. Having selected the uses, the registrant can upload all the related information directly into its assessment, for example in KESA. The format facilitates easy transfer. The registrant is then able to derive exposure estimates and risk characterization. If the risks are controlled, meaning that the substance fits into the existing condition of uses, registrant document and communicate it into an exposure scenario. Downstream users will be happy to recognize in the exposure scenario received the condition of use they have communicated to registrants. If the control of risks cannot be demonstrated, the assessment needs to be refined. In these cases, further communication may be needed between registrants and downstream users. This slide aims at illustrating the general flow of information explained before. With use maps, realistic information on use and condition of use is collected by the sector, will be used by registrants for the assessment, will be made available to authorities, 
and will come back to downstream users if demonstrated to be safe. With this approach, the information transferred becomes meaningful for all actors. Now some additional remarks about the use map format before concluding. The use map package consists of four templates, which will be explained further by my colleague Sandrine. The first one is where the sector will provide a general description of its use and the different activities contributing to the uses. The condition of uses con corresponding to each of the activities are described in separate templates, which are specific to the type of assessment to be performed, environmental assessment, assessment for workers, or assessment for consumers. The link between the uses and the conditions of uses in the different templates is ensured via codes. It is important to note that the input assessment templates support the collection of the key information needed for the most common exposure assessment tools. This minimizes the risk for missing information. Finally, note that maximum alignment has been seeked between the fields in the templates and other IT tools such as KESA, Euclid and DES, COM, XML to facilitate automatic transfer. So now to conclude, a short summary of the main benefits of the sector use maps. For registrants, use maps are the most effective way to collect representative information on uses. Use maps provide registrants with structured and comprehensive information, allowing them to carry out a chemical safety assessment in an efficient way. Key information is available and can be very easily upload it in assessment tools. For downstream users, use maps are an efficient way of making sure that their typical uses are covered in the registration dossiers. Use maps helps registrants in preparing more realistic chemical safety assessment for their reach registration, which means that the outcome is also more helpful for the customers and for authorities. Consistency in the assessments is increased, for example, for different substances ending up in the same product. The same condition of uses are used in the assessment by the different registrants as the information comes from the use map. The need for one-to-one -one supply chain communication is reduced to specific cases where safe use cannot be demonstrated at first. If new information is available to the sector, Updates by registrants is facilitated. Changes can easily be flagged in the sector use map and are communicated to all registrants alike. As the information is very well structured, it can be stored in database format, which supports IT processing. All in all, use maps support efficient communication and can help promote good practice and realistic advices on safe use. I hope you found the presentation useful. I now give the floor to my colleague Sandrine Lefebvre, who will present in more details the key features of the sector use maps. I hope you found the presentation useful. I now give the floor to my colleague Sandrine, who will talk about the key features of sector use maps. Good morning, my name is Sandrine and I work on the Chemical Safety Programme at the European Chemicals Agency. Today, I'll talk to you about the main features of the use maps, which information they contain and what is already available. You've learned with my colleague Laurent that use maps created by downstream user sectors could be an efficient way to provide realistic users and users' descriptions information to the registrant. A use map is also a key source of information for the registrants to perform the exposure assessment of their substance and communicate in the supply chain how to safely use a substance. So, how does it look like and what does it contain? This is what we will see in the coming slides. A use map consists of four different templates. One template to report the use descriptions and three templates to describe the existing condition of use in a way that they can be fed into the registrant exposure assessment for workers, 
consumers and environment. The template to report the exposure assessment input for the workers is called the SWED. The one to report the exposure assessment input for the consumer is called the SCED. And finally, the template to report the exposure assessment input for the environment is called the SPERC. Let's now have a look at each of these templates and which information they include. The first one is the Use Description template. This template consists of different parts. On the screens, you can see a yellow part. It's an identification of the typical uses in one sector, and the uses can also be included in different life cycle stage. For example, in one sector, we have uses that correspond to the manufacturing stage, the formulation stage, and the consumer stage. The green part describes each contributing activity for the users. It can be, for example, process steps or tasks performed by workers. The blue part contains additional information that might be of interest for the registrants when they will use the use map. Detailed guidance on how to describe the users are available in the template itself, but you can also find additional information in the ECA guidance R12. But let's have a look at each part with an example. In this example, a sector has indicated that one of the typical use is a professional use of general cleaning product. The use description part consists of several elements. The life cycle stage, in this case, the use is for professional workers, which means that the workers are not working at an industrial site. We have the use name, which is easily understandable and unambiguous. Basically, when you read it, you should understand what we're talking about. Here, for example, it's a professional use for general cleaning products. This name is meant to, become, to, be, is meant to become the title of the exposure scenario for that use. For the name, references to standard phrases can also be indicated in the next column. These standard phrases will be used to communicate the use in the supply chain, and the advantage of using standard phrases is that they can be easily translated in an automatic manner. So this is why we do recommend to use standard phrases as much as possible. The description of the use includes also a further description of the use where additional details could be provided. For example, um, here in, on the screen, you can see that the, the, the additional information is related to the fact that it's a manual spraying and wiping, which is using a long handle tool. This template includes also some market information, such as the sector of use or the product category. The rest of the columns consist in additional information that could be of interest for the registrants, um, for example, if the use leads to a subsequent service life, which means if the use described is leading to the incorporation of the substance into an article. In this case, the answer is no. Let's move now to the next part of the use description, the green one. This is where we define the contributing activities for each use. In our example, the use consists of three contributing activities, a manual spraying, a wiping, and an, and an environmental description, which tells us, for example, that the use happens indoor. For each contributing activity, a name is provided. Similarly to the use name, a standard phrase can be also specified that will be used in the exposure scenario for communication. Each contributing activity can be categorized with a standardized use descriptor, such as the process category, the PROC, or an environmental release category, the ERC. In addition, for each contributing activity, there is a link to the relevant exposure assessment input. If the contributing activity is related to workers, you will find here the reference for a SWED, like on the screen, for the manual spraying contributing activity. Finally, in the blue part, sectors can indicate additional information that could be of interest for the registrants. In the example on the screens, registrants of solvent could see that solvents is present in this use. They can also see the typical concentration of the substance in the product. This information could be used by registrants, for example, when performing the, their exposure assessment. Let's move now to the first exposure assessment template, the one for workers the SWED. So what are the SWEDs? 
The slides describe the operational conditions and the risk management measures for the workers' activities. The information contained in the SWEDS can be directly incorporated by the registrants in their exposure assessment, as the fields are totally aligned with Euclid. For the registrants, using a SWED as input for their exposure assessment ensures that the assessments are realistic and relevant. It also ensures that the communication of the operating conditions and the risk management measure via the uh, exposure scenario for communication will be understood by the downstream user. Guidance on how to fill the information is available in the SWED template, but also additional guidance can be found in the guidance R14. If we look now in more details at the SWED template, we will find six different parts. The first one contains the identifiers characterizing the SWED and explaining the scope of the SWED. The second part, which is the core of the SWED, is describing the condition of use to be used when performing an exposure assessment. For example, if the registrant is using an assessment tool, which is called ESETOC TRA. An example of condition of use is the place of use, indoor or outdoor, or the use of personal protection equipment, such as the gloves. In the third part are specified other conditions of use that can be used with other assessment tools beyond the ESETOC TRA. The part 4 of the SWED template will indicate if the contributing activity takes place under rigorous containment or not. If the downstream user sectors have also measured data that could be used by the registrant as part of their exposure assessment, this can also be specified in the template. Finally, good practices to be communicated can be specified there as well. These good practices are not necessarily an input for the exposure assessment tools. In the SWED, it's also indicated which information will be used where. For example, some information will only be used for the exposure assessment and reported in the chemical safety report of the registrant, while other information are aimed to be reported in the exposure scenario for communication that will be attached to the extended safety datasheet. Understanding where the information will be used and by whom is very important for the downstream user and for the downstream user sectors. So make sure that you indicate the right information in the right place. Let's move now to the exposure assessment template for consumers, the SCADS. The SCADS inform on condition of use for substances in consumer products. This includes information on the design of the consumer product type, for example, the package size or the design of the package, and information on the habits and the practices of how, on how consumers actually use the products. Registrants can use this information as an input for their exposure assessment. The SCADS includes also suitable standard phrases. Further guidance are available in the ECA guidance R15. So, which information can we find in the SCAD? The first part is called the SCAD characteristic, and it contains the identifiers uh, of the SCAD, and it explains also the scope of the SCAD. For example, the sector or the type of consumer products covered in the SCAD. The second part is describing the common determinants to be used when performing an exposure assessment. For example, the frequency of use or the concentration in the product. In addition, the SCAD contains specific parameters for the exposure assessment via a specific route of exposure. It can be dermal, by inhalation, or an oral route. One of these determinants is, for example, um, the skin contact area. Finally, we will have a look at the SPERCs, the Exposure Assessment Template for the Environment. In the SPERCs, we will find the operational conditions and the risk management measures, but this time with regard to the environment. SPERCs contain also the corresponding release factors to water, air, soil and waste. Registrants can use this information as an input for their environmental exposure assessments. It will ensure them that the assessments are again realistic and relevant. The SPERCs also include suitable standard phrases that will help the registrants communicate effectively with the downstream user. If you wish, additional guidance are also available in the guidance on CSA R16. When you open a SPERC, you will find a fact sheet and a background document. 
The fact sheet that you can see here on the screen includes the following information. The name of the SPERC and the scope or the applicability domain. The fact for the SPERCs and for the exposure scenario for communication. It can be, for example, um, the operating conditions and the risk management measure for a particular activity impacting on the environment, um, such as how to handle the waste or either um, water treatment on site. Release factors are also specified and they depend on the substance property. This is why sometimes at the DU you will have to specify multiple release factors. The SPECS fact sheet indicates also clearly which information should be reported in the CSR and which one is intended to be communicated in the supply chain via the extended safety data sheet. In addition, background documents can also be added uh, to the SPERC fact sheet. These background documents can, for example, explain in more details um, the products covered or also how the different release factors have been derived. This information might be pretty useful for registrants when they will carry out their chemical safety assessment. To summarize in simple terms, the use maps are a map a representation of the typical uses of substances within one sector. It describes how the substances are currently handled for each sector, the so-called conditions of use, and the use map ensures also that the registrants are using realistic and relevant assessment for the registration of the chemical. Use maps are also documented in an agreed, harmonized format, and it also phrased in a sector language using standard phrases so downstream users would also understand better the exposure scenario that would be attached to the ex extended safety data sheet that they will receive from their suppliers. Automatic translation of the extended safety data sheet will also be much easier thanks to those standard phrases. As a conclusion, I'd like to remind you that it's important to understand how the information in the use map is used and by whom so it's populated correctly by the Dancing User Sectors Association. After the theory, let's move now to some practical aspects. For example, where to find the information on the use map. All use map information is available on ECA website. There is a unique and centralized place where you can find information on the use maps, the different templates I've shown you, but also a library containing the use map elements that have already been created by the sector's association. The library is a key feature, a key feature for the downstream user sector because this is where you, they will publish and make available the sector use map so the registrant can easily find them. But it's also a key feature for downstream users because this is, for example, where you can check if your sector has already created a use map that can be used by registrant. If not, maybe you need to activate your sector. Let's have a closer look at the library itself. The library gives an overview of all the sectors that have already submitted some use map elements. By clicking on the sector name, further information is displayed. For example, here you can see additional information about the sector, the type of product, the type of substance or uses that the sector is covering with the use map. Not all registrants know the Downstream User Sectors Association, so this information is important for registrants to select the relevant use maps. In addition, and most probably the most important, the section indicates which use map elements are already available in the use maps. It can also give information on what is planned in the coming months. Last but not least, the use map elements prepared by the Downstream User Sectors are are directly downloadable from this page. The use map library is a recent feature. The first use map elements um, have been published five months ago only. It was in October 2016, which is quite recent. Currently, we have five sectors that have already published use maps elements in the library. This work has been made uh, with the support and the coordination from DUC. Those use maps are already covering a broad range of uses and sectors. For example, you can find use map elements for sectors such as the cosmetics, the detergents, soaps, but also adhesives and sealants, imaging and printing, or constrictions chemical. There are also many other active downstream user sectors that are currently working on the preparation 
or the update of their USMAP elements. In the coming months, more USMAP should be published in the library, so keep an eye on it. You might also be interested to hear about what will happen in the coming months. As mentioned, more use maps should be published in the library by additional sectors. In addition to the field in template I presented to you earlier, some sectors are also actively working on the preparation of the use map in a KESAR format. You might wonder why. Well, KESAR is the IT tool developed by ECA for registrants to carry out an exposure assessment and to generate CSR, but also exposure scenario for communication. For the downstream user sector, preparing their use map in a KESAR format allows them to check that the use map contains enough information for the registrants and that the assessor can assess the exposure of the chemicals. They can also preview how the exposure scenario for communication generated by registrants will look like. For registrants, having use map in a KESAR format means that they have the operating conditions and the risk management measures in a format which is readily available for them to carry out their exposure assessment. There's no need for them to retransfer manually the use map information in their assessment and reporting tool, and they also avoid the typing mistake. So now you probably better understand why making the use map available in a KESAR format is a win-win situation for downstream user sectors and registrants. To help the sectors, some support is already um, provided by ECA, for example, on clarifying some concept or giving some ad advice on how or where to specify some information in the template or in KSR. And in addition, some workshops are also organized with the downstream user sectors to facilitate the exchange of experience among the different downstream user sectors. Soon, CEFIC will also kick off an exercise with all the actors from the supply chain in order to illustrate the application of the use map. All those activities might lead to the publication of additional support in the coming months. I hope you have now a better understanding about what are the use maps and why they are so important for successful communication through the supply chain. Remember, the use maps are an efficient way for you, the downstream users, to inform the registrants about the realistic uses and condition of use of their substance. It is also a key source of information for registrants to perform the exposure assessment of the substance and communicate in the supply chain how to safely use the substance. You can play an active role. My colleague Monique will explain you how in a couple of minutes. Thanks for your attention and I leave now the floor to Monique. Thank you Sandrine and good morning everyone. I am Monique Pillet and I work in the Risk Management Implementation Directorate here at ECA. In the next 10 minutes or so, I will explain what downstream user companies can do to contribute to the effort undertaken in building sector use maps and give some general advice to downstream user associations who want to start developing their use map. Along the way, I will also underline some of the benefits to be gained in the exercise. But I would like to start by taking a few minutes reflecting on the feedback we have heard from downstream users about extended safety data sheets. And so far, this has not been very positive. The extended safety data sheets are too long. Sometimes the exposure scenarios for all potential uses are annexed. Sometimes even exposure scenarios from the chemical safety report of the registration dossier are copied. The content is often too generic or even unrealistic and therefore the documents are more confusing rather than helpful. Downstream users also find that the lack of harmonization in the, formal, in the format is confusing. Often no table of content is included or the titles of the exposure scenarios are not clear. All this makes it difficult to find to recognize and to understand the information. In terms of using the information, there are some uncertainties with how this information relates to the requirements under occupational safety and health or environmental legislation. It also seems that for mixtures, the information on safe use is often missing. And last but not least, 
there is no clear and efficient mechanism to give feedback to suppliers, either on these points or when informing them about your own uses. A lot of time is spent in bilateral communication with suppliers without achieving the expected goals. So altogether, the extended safety data sheet is seen as difficult to use and to process. And this situation has business consequences. For example, it can be difficult to understand if your use is covered or if you need to take some actions. As a result, it can be difficult to show regulatory compliance during an inspection. Also, if you formulate mixtures and supply them to your customers, you may receive complaints about the safety data sheets you send them. Altogether, communicating with your customers and suppliers on these issues will require an awful lot of resource that could be better used to deal with your core business activities. In other terms, the overall business consequence is a waste of resources. But luckily, improving the eff efficiency is possible and as a downstream user, you can contribute to the improvement in two ways. The first way has to do with how you communicate information on your uses up the supply chain to the registrant. And the second way with how you react when receiving an extended safety data sheet. The best way to communicate information on uses up the supply chain in an efficient and effective way is to avoid one-to-one -one communication and cooperate with your sector organization. First, check if your sector has published their use map on the ECA library. If, it not, if it's not the case, contact them and ask them if the development work is ongoing. Become an active member by encouraging and supporting the work. This way, you can also make sure your uses are included. Of course, this also means you need to make an inventory of your own uses. For this, we recommend that you use the approach and structure developed in the harmonized templates. It will be a learning process, but it will help you understand better the extended safety data sheets you will receive later. If the sector use map work is already well underway, but you notice that your uses are not yet covered, ask your sector to include them. Again, using the, the harmonized templates will greatly improve the efficiency at all levels. Once we publish the slides of the webinar, you will be able to access the templates by clicking the link on this slide. And we really recommend downstream users to cooperate with the sector organizations wherever this is possible, because as I mentioned earlier, this is more efficient than one-to-one -one communication with suppliers and registrants. Let's now talk about the second way downstream users can tr contribute to improve the content of the extended safety data sheet. And this has to do with what you do when you receive an ext extended safety data sheet. As Lohan explained in her presentation, downstream users have legal requirements related to the content of these documents. So when you receive an extended safety data sheet, it is important that you read it you check it and use the information it contains. But if you notice that your use is not covered or that the content of the, the safety data sheet is not clear, we advise you to first contact your sector organization and check if your use is included in their use map. If it is not, ask them to add it and if needed, encourage and support the sector in developing the use map. You can also encourage the sector to promote the use map to the registrants so that registrant would use its content to update their registration dossier. And last but not least, you can contact your supplier to ask for clarification on the content of the extended safety data sheet and if necessary, ask them to refer to the use map when updating their safety data sheet. Remember that use maps will help bring a clear, relevant information, and therefore it is a good idea to promote collaboration, use the maps and encourage their use. And to, su to summarize these, I will simply quote Reta Puska, 
reach manager at Yara International. Reta very rightly said, I advise downstream users to join forces and start creating sector use maps. We will get better exposure scenarios and avoid lots of correspondence with our suppliers if we receive everything in a good condition from the beginning. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to remind downstream user companies that ahead of the 2018 registration deadline, they have until 31st of May this year to make their uses known to registrants. And since this deadline is coming quite soon, it is important to identify how you use the substances that are critical to your business now and make sure that your sector will include these uses in their use map. If it is not possible, engage without delay in a dialogue with the suppliers and ensure that your uses will be included in the registration. You can find more information about the registration deadline on the ECA website by clicking on the REACH 2018 banner. I will now give some specific advice for downstream user sector associations who have not yet developed their use map. These advices have been collected based on the experience of sectors who have published their, use, their updated standardized use map. First, to ensure standardization and efficiency in the use map, it is important to understand and use the agreed templates and naming conventions. Again, once we have published the webinar slides, you will be to access more information and guidance on the disinformation by clicking the link on the slide. To start the work, organize a process to prepare the use map. For example, you can create a task force with member companies that are representative of your sector. In addition, you will need to collect information from your members, so be ready to engage in communication activities with them. Also, you may consider involving registrants of different substances supplied to your sector. Registrants can give very valuable inputs as they will be the main users of the finalized use maps. In the use map, make sure that good practice established in your sectors are reflected and describe the activities of your sector with short and intuitive phrases. Include the standard phrases that will be used in the exposure scenario for communication. Also, generate use map files in KESA importable format so that registrants can easily use them when performing their chemical safety assessment. And already during the development work, it is worth that you inform downstream users and registrants about your use map so that they can get prepared to use them in new registrations and in updates. When you are ready with the work, submit your use map package to have it published on the central library maintained by ECA. And if you need help on the way, do contact us. We will do our best to support you. To conclude my presentation, I would like to summarize a few key points. First, to downstream user sector associations. Be active now in developing your use maps and make sure to keep your members and relevant registrants informed about your work. And to individual downstream users, contact your sector association, follow the, their work and contribute to the initiative. This is the way you will increase your understanding and get the most benefits. The work being done now will really influence the information in the supply chain in the years to come. So make sure to get involved and to become one of the movers. Thank you for your attention. I now pass the floor back to Andrew, who will conclude this webinar. Thank you, Monique. Let's spend a few moments to remind you on some key points that you've heard today. Use maps help registrants and downstream users alike with structured, harmonised and realistic information on use and exposure. Industry sectors representing downstream users have started publishing their use maps. Others are currently developing them 
or updating them. First registrants have committed to use them for the 2018 registrations. The tool is also particularly useful for registration updates. Investigate what's going on in your sector. Check the USMAPS library on ECHA's website or contact your sector association to find out if they have a USMAP that you can take advantage of or if they intend to prepare one. You can find more information at the link shown. So, do play your part to ensure good, efficient supply chain communication. We are reaching the end of the webinar, but before we go, remember that you still have 30 minutes to send questions to our panellists. When the webinar closes, you will be redirected to a feedback form. Your comments and suggestions will help us to further improve our webinars. If you want to know more about how REACH applies to you as a downstream user, visit our website. Look for the downstream user banner, which easily identifies content relevant to you. You can also follow news on our social media. More events are coming up in the next months. ECHA's 12th Stakeholders Day explains more on REACH registration and supply chain communication. Training will also be available covering the REACH IT tools for registration, including ECHA's Chemical Safety Assessment and Reporting Tool, KZAR. If you're not attending in person, the programme can be followed online. There will also be a REACH 2018 Spring School, which features a series of webinars, taking you step by step and in more detail on registration, including the assessment of hazard and risk, for which compiling information on uses is an important part. Why not subscribe to our news service and stay up to date with upcoming news and events? Today's webinar, Getting Meaningful Exposure Scenarios, How Sector Use Maps Help, will be recorded and published on our website. You will receive a link to all the material by email as soon as it is available. We will also gather the remaining questions and answers and send them to you shortly after the event. Thank you for joining us and I hope to see you again in our upcoming webinars.